<laughs> Thanks, Jeanette. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to talk about my story. I love WordPress. I feel like it's a very inclusive software. Today, on October 15, 2016, as she mentioned, I stand before you as a marketing manager, my dream job. But last year, October 15, 2015, I was an office manager for a commercial general contractor who specialized in, in design build, tenant improvements, and seismic retrofitting, and tilt-up replacements. So one techie thing to another techie thing, very specific. And so it seems like a very dramatic change to change industries and careers at the daunting age of 42, and I don't mind saying that I was 42 at the time, <laughs> uh, because it's a scary thing to change your career in, at that age, because you get into this, you get into this groove or or rut or you know kind of a, a space where what makes you valuable is the years of experience that you had and so that's sort of what happened with me in construction but it was not an overnight sensation uh, it took a lot of years of work and it took me sitting in my car in the parking lot dreading going inside because it was 7.56, the next four minutes are mine. You can't have them. And, I've, and I found that I was doing this, and I was, I was in this pattern because, as I was telling Jeanette earlier, I analyzed myself and then discussed that in a vision of myself. So I realized that, well, we're having a problem here because I would rather take a photograph of a weed in the parking lot and put it on Instagram <laughs> than to go inside because I hated my job. I really, really, really hated my job. <laughs> but there is no dream without the work. We like to think that things are instant and that they happen just by magic. That's my favorite gift, magic. Um, but my story is kind of like convoluted, and there's two parts to it. It's about being ready for that serendipitous moment, and it's about being available to be caught when you fall, because you will have things happen in your lives, and you will need community around you when it does. So this, for you Midwesterners, is a picture of a cell in Alcatraz. Now, I thought this was supposed to be uplifting. <laughs> Why do you have a prison cell up there? This is, this is representative of the running joke I have with my life. And, um, and, and so you'll appreciate this a little bit. So Alcatraz was built to be the inescapable prison. There is no way anybody's getting out. It's built on a rock, literally and really far away from San Francisco proper. And even if you could get into the water, it's super cold, you'll probably die of hypothermia. Like, just no way you're getting out of that place. And that's where they put the hardest of hard, the people that just kept escaping, like Frank Morris. And if you haven't watched the Clint Eastwood film, Escape from Alcatraz, I encourage you to do so. It's awesome. And then you'll understand what I'm saying because I'm going to be weaving that analogy throughout my entire presentation. <laughs> Frank Morris realized because even though he was trapped on that island, he wasn't trapped in the building because the fog and the moisture had actually, see this is the construction coming out. The fog and the moisture actually corroded the rebar inside the concrete walls, right? So by accident, he discovered that the walls had a flaw and that he could, by commandeering a spoon from the canteen, dig his way out. So he came up with this plan and he built paper mache heads so that while the guards were walking by, he could be in there digging. He, he painted a, like a faux, cover so it looked like everything was still there and it was very um i like escape plans 
Maybe that's a little insight to my psyche, I don't know. Uh, uh, but I liked the planning of it and the conspiracy, how he got out and he, he got a crew and they collected rain jackets. But anyway, the point is that he we realized even though he felt trapped, even though he felt trapped, and even though to everybody there he was trapped, and in this case, rightfully so, because he was a murderer. So that's when the analogy ends. Um, <laughs> even though he felt trapped, he was not indeed trapped. And I think one of the great things to learn is that we should be prepared for opportunity. Frank Morris was prepared for opportunity. He had the spoon. He did the work. He did the work. So even though I just got a marketing job, I've been doing content marketing since 2009. It's not something that just magically happened. Magic. <laughs> There's no dream without the work. Yes, I have my dream job. And people say, I don't know how this just happened to you. Like I was just standing on the corner and somebody said, hey, will you work for us? You look like a good worker. It didn't happen like that. It was years and years and years years of work. So this is what happened. I realized I was doing content marketing for my company because my opportunity, my Frank Morris moment was the economy tanking in 2009. I don't know who in this room remembers what happened, but in the construction industry, people were dropping off like flies. There were huge, massive, terrifying, I'm jumping out of a window layoffs. And we were all just like panicked. And even though we were lean and mean because we did design build, which means we subcontract, like a lot of you agencies subcontract out with graphic designers and everything. We had a small nut, but still, we all took a 20% pay cut for three and a half years. It was scary, scary times. So I said, well, I'm doing all this great work for them. I need to start building my own brand. So while I was supposed to be sleeping, I was blogging and tweeting and making screencasts and doing a Guru Minute video series that taught social media strategy. And because I was successful at social media in a business to business environment with contractors, like usually what I tell people is, they go, really how successful were you? Well. Our commercial general contractor Twitter account has 20,000 followers. So those were not purchased. I did that organically. So they would ask me these questions and I realized, hmm, I might have something here. So I met amazing people because I was interacting with them in my free time, right? And so we sort of started being a group, this is the girls in the middle. These are my mentors. They all did social media for contractors or industrial um, accounts. And we ended up forming a secret Facebook group. And we actually took a couple trips together in Arizona, which was super scary for me because I realized, okay, I'm good behind the computer. I need to be better in the real world with actual human beings looking at their faces, right? This is the hard part, like, because I, I feel like a lot of us come to the tech world because we can control computers and we can control how we look by using computers and copywriting and Instagram filters, <laughs> right? So the thing is, you need to actually make human relationships beyond just digital. And I'm not saying that the digital relationships aren't real, because I would not be standing here if I didn't have digital relationships. So in 2013, my friend Pam Unkst in the lavender of Pam Man Marketing said, hey, I'm gonna come out from New Jersey to Orange County to go to WordCamp. You want to go? Like, What's WordCamp? She goes, who cares? It's only $40. <laughs> so I was like, okay, sure, 40 bucks. It was fine. So my friend Carol from the Bay Area came down. And <laughs> we got into the parking lot. We're like, 
We see hipsters. I think we're here. <laughs> we were definitely the oldest people in the room. But that's cool. Like, I love my millennials. Woohoo! Okay, so anyway, so that was my first word camp, word camp Orange County in, 20, in 2013. And we thought it was so great. We just thought, okay, we're going to keep doing this. This is going to be our girls' weekend because she lives in the San Francisco area. I live in Southern California. There's a good reason to you know, increase your skills and all of that. And so well, when, when I was building my brand, I was also looking for jobs, right? Because remember Alcatraz, the spoon? So a lot of them wanted social media managers to understand how to work with websites, which I have no idea why still. But um, the truth is a lot of us blog. And so we need to be very familiar with the WordPress admin screen, right? Okay, so remember I said that goal about not being a recluse, being with human beings, breathing the same air? So I started going to a meetup called Social Media Masterminds in 2014. And it was interesting because I'd, I'd, I had this kind of instinct for marketing because I was a psych minor and I was a teacher, and that's like a good kind of mesh of skills for marketing. Being able to understand people and being able to teach them is, is really kind of prerequisite for marketing. So I had an instinct, but I had zero training. Don't even ask me what a KPI is. I have no idea. Like I didn't get an MBA or anything like that, right? So I, did, I had theories, but they were totally untested and unverified. When I started going to the social media mastermind group, I started realizing, hmm, I might be good at this. Like I wasn't sure, I thought like everybody could do this. That's why I called my brand, you too can be a guru. Cause it's like, psh, anybody can do this. It's not that hard, right? So participating in those meetups and disgusting and masterminding strategy is what really helped me kind of solidify in my mind that I could do this and not just that, but it was the people that I met. That's why this slide is people, because WordPress is about community. And relationships are the basis for everything that really matters in this entire life. So in 2014, remember I was looking for a job. 2014, I saw a job for Buffer as a happiness engineer. And I love Buffer, and Buffer is great, and they look like they're having fun at their retreats, and since they have a transparency situation with their um, annual salaries and everything, when I saw that, I go, oh, this is a marketable skill. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, you look at Craigslist and how much people want to pay for a social media manager, and like, yeah, I haven't made that little since I was in high school, so, but thanks. Um, so I go, wow, it started clicking in my mind that maybe I was good at this for real, and maybe this was going to be for real, but they made you read a couple of books, and I'm not really a reader. Like, I, like I'm like i at the back end of a book I started reading five years ago. I'm almost done. <laughs> so it's just not for me, but I was at lunch after this group, and they said, just get on audible.com audible because you're driving an hour to and from work every day, wasting your life on the five freeway, right? Uh, oh, okay, so whatever, insert your own freeway here. Um, so, it, and I was, I was doing 11 hour days. I was building my brand at night when I should have been sleeping like Frank Morris. And, and I realized, okay, yeah, maybe I can do this. And so the first book was How to Win Friends and Influence People. And the next was Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea, the CEO of Zappos. He's a pretty big guy in the space of developing, protecting, and encouraging a company culture. If you're interested in company culture, you really should read that book or get it on audible.com. Um, I cried. I cried because, and it, it's maybe a sad commentary on my life, but I didn't know and this is not me exaggerating for the sake of humor. I did not know that you could be happy at work. To me, work was keeping your head down, not getting fired, and paying the rent. If you wanted to have purpose, 
or if you wanted to you know, do anything fun, that was what you do after you pay your bills from the work that you went to so that you could pay the rent. So there was no reason why I thought, oh, people can't be happy at work. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my whole life. Just do your working and go have fun when you're done. So I, I started thinking, you know what? Maybe I could be happy at work too. So 2015, in my head, I said, I am leaving this job. I'm leaving this job this year. My friend who was a roofer held me accountable and called me every month. Bridget, you're still there. Yep, I'm still here. You're going to leave this year. I know, I said I was going to leave. I said I was going to leave. I'm trying to leave. I'm trying to leave. So 2015, it started with me deciding, okay, enough with practicing around. I need to get active. I need to really be aggressive with my opportunity you know, situation. Remember, you have to work for your dream so that you're ready for the serendipity. So in March of 2015, another one of my friends, Heather Steele from Blue Steel Solutions, their web development and marketing agency in Denton, Texas, was coming to speak at WordCamp San Diego. And so again, Carol and I are like, let's go meet our friend, it's only 40 bucks. So she was speaking on WordPress 101. There was a class in between, and after that was Jason Tucker and about the admin dashboard. So I go, okay, that's cool. We'll just stay in the same room and tweet or something. Because the class in between was something about installing WordPress locally, and I had no idea what that meant. Like so much no, like layers of no, like a seven layer bean dip of no, right? Okay. <laughs> To me, when I hear the word local, I think you're growing corn in your backyard and selling at the farmer's market, right? So there's no way I knew what this meant. But I had been telling my friend Carol, uh, who's behind me in this picture right here, I said, I wish, I wish there was a way you could like play around with WordPress and not like commit to a host. <laughs> I didn't know it was a choice. I just wished it had happened. So when Steve from ServerPress started talking about desktop server, I was like, this is my WordPress prayers answered. I'm gonna come down and, you know, we're not talking about religion, but like really make a commitment, you know, to something. And so that Monday I did, I, I installed desktop server. Because of course, even though I was the office manager, even though I was doing all this content marketing and running project um, things, you know, about the project. We now call that content marketing because I know what it is. Um, but project profiles and tweeting and blogging and Instagramming. I'd also built their site in CSS, which is terrible. Um, I probably was like, I don't even know. I think I copied it from like CSS Zen Garden or something. It's like I made it work. I don't know how. It's just magic. So, And then we had a WordPress.com blog because I knew we needed a blog because all of my content was going on a blog. So I didn't have it all together. It was like a total nightmare. And um, I didn't know what four, um, 301 redirects are. So I manually changed all those links. <laughs> I know, the collective groan, like, wow. I do things the hard way so you don't have to. Um, yeah, it was, it was really intense. In 10 days, I had it built. I had it working, I had no broken links, and I got the mobile-friendly blessing from Google. So I was like, yes, this is awesome. So then, of course, I had another WordPress.com blog called YouTube Can Be a Guru, and I said, well, I should just see if BridgetWillard.com is available, and it was. So that was a lot easier, because that's an XML, like, just throw that in. I still had Hemingway, throw it in, boom. So of course, what am I going to do after I build my first two WordPress websites? I'm going to blog about it. So it was traumatic, and I should probably be in counseling. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Pretty much say, yeah, I'm never building a website again. Should you be allowed to say that at work camps? I'm not sure. Like, don't like oust me, but like, it was a very traumatic experience for me, and because I didn't have enough training. <laughs> 
really, I'm just like, like, let's get in there, do this. Like, who cares? We'll just learn it as I go. Um, so yeah, I blogged about it. And this is the part of the story where I say, you know, a lot of people obsess about how many people they have reading their blog. Like to me, 20 hits on BridgetWiller.com is like revival. Woo! You know, I'm like sending screenshots to my mom. 20 people were on this today. Um, so really, the the value of blogging is like a whole nother topic. But I will say, in this case, only two people really needed to read it. My friend Heather Steele, who shared it in the advanced Facebook group for WordPress, and then Matt Cromwell. So this is when the Word Impress people start weaving into my story because Heather said, hey, Matt Cromwell wants your email. I go, I don't know why. Like, that's weird. But go ahead and send it to him. To him, that's fine, I don't care. And so, and so she says, and so he writes me and he says, hey, Bridget, we think you would be great at writing for our blog and testing plugins. Did you read what I wrote? <laughs> I think you have the wrong person. I'm pretty sure you have the wrong person. There were several emails going back and forth trying to talk Matt Cromwell out of <laughs> me testing plugins and writing about it. And he says, yeah, but you are the are audience. You know, you're somebody who works at a small business and you're doing this yourself and we like your perspective. Da, da, da. I said, okay, I'll try it. Like, I don't know. So I did. So I started writing for them. And then, let's see, what happened next? Um, there's so much, I didn't want to go off of too many rabbit trails. That's why I have to make notes. So I started doing that. Okay, in June of 2015, I went to my third word camp in Orange County. So now I'm at my fourth word camp. And um, I got to meet Jason Canill and Matt Cromwell. And we were all standing in the parking lot like Sunday, you know, like sometimes word camps are more fun like after, you know, like people talk about the hallway track or whatever. That's just people talking. Hallway track is like WordPress code for networking. So uh, basically we were just having a conversation and Jason was saying something about, he was looking for a social media manager and I was like talking to Matt, so I didn't even hear that. I heard Carol say, but just a social media manager. I go, hey, you need a remote worker. You know where to find me. I just had this sudden burst of like boldness and you know, it was my desperation. Remember, I promised myself I was leaving. So this is June and he's like, oh yeah, whatever. Okay, whatever. you're an aggressive lady. So, um, <laughs> Like, I was so scared. I didn't even know who that was. That was some, like, multiple personality, because it wasn't me. Normally, I'm like, never would walk up to any of you in the hall and say anything, let alone, like, ask for a job. Like, hire me right now, dude. You know, it's just not me. So they did. They, they did. They contacted me and asked me to try their, try tweeting out for them for their give handle, which I did successfully, I think I can say, without feeling braggy. Um, and then that same summer, Alex Vasquez, who was the lead organizer for WordCamp Los Angeles, said, hey, would you volunteer to do the social media for the camp? And I was like, sure, no problem. Like, I don't know anybody or anything, but sure, I'll do it. So I did. I did the Facebook and the Twitter. And I'm going to tell you right now, I wish that I had volunteered at a WordCamp a lot sooner. There's no better way, especially if you're a shy person like I am. I know you have a hard time believing that. <laughs> because it's so much easier to stand in front of a group of people than to have that awkward silence that happens in small talk. Like you're like, so you're from Buffalo. And blah. That's it, I got nothing. <laughs> um, I think they have a football team or something. Like, Anyway, um, so that is a great way to meet people in a structured environment. I cannot recommend it more highly. Um, but then in, in September, they were like, the WordPress guys were like, come spend a day with us in the office. 
So I'm like, okay, I'll take a vacation day. I like strategic, strategically placed it near Labor Day. So it's like, yeah, I'm taking a four day weekend. Cause remember I still have a job, like, and I was public at this time. Like I was, everybody was my friend on Facebook and Twitter and like, at the WordCamp in San Diego, they didn't have Wi-Fi, so my mom and sister actually thought I got abducted because I wasn't tweeting. So um, I had to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to spend some time with my friends in San Diego. You know, like, oh, let's not put this on the Internet. Um, and so more and more, I had other tasks. And at this time, remember I said there's no, there's no dream without the... There's no dream without the work. work. You have to work to get your dream job. What? That's just crazy. So I had 11 hour days and then I was working on top of that. So I had like 16 hour days. You know, when you're working for your dream until you have it, there's not really as much work life balance as you would want to happen. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, in November, of 2015, I got an offer letter, I signed it in like five seconds. And uh, on December 1st of 2015, so my goal of 2015, I started as a marketing manager for Word and Press at 42 years old. <laughs> and I met the community before I met the, I wish I could say I met the community before I met the code, but the code and I have never been officially introduced. <laughs> But I met, the co I met the community before I met the co is a better tagline, right? I just can't say it. So software sounds more like, yeah, I could get away with that. I spent a lot of time in the dashboard. So yeah. The community is what makes WordPress special. It really does. It's a differentiating factor. If there was a way to market WordPress by the humans of WordPress, that's what should be happening. Because in my entire life, I have never met so many selfless, happy, generous, insanely intelligent people, never in my whole life. And yeah, the applaud, you guys are awesome. <laughs> because my story would not be complete without telling the story of WordPress community. Because my story isn't really about me. My story is about the WordPress community. It's all about you. You as a collective WordPress community. And there is nobody, there is no demographic, no family, no work group that has ever believed in me as much as the WordPress community has believed in me. I just want to be the person that everybody believes that I am. And it's so amazing because even, even though I was like, oh yeah, this is my first WordCamp talk, my friends are texting me and tweeting. And I'm like, exhibits A, B, C. I mean, you could just stand up here all day long talking about how amazing the WordPress community is. And I'm not going to talk all day, but I do have a little bit of time left. Good 20 minutes, so settle in, shift, shift around if you want. I met all these people on Twitter. I started going to work camps. I started going to social media meetups. And I started realizing, hey, this, this, is, a, this is a real path for me. And uh, I was really excited. My mom, um, so cute. You know, I don't know if, it, if you guys like this, but when you're growing up, you know you made it when something got on mom's fridge. You know what I mean? Like, if you got that drawing on your mom's fridge, that was it. You're like, yes. So <laughs> my mom is adorable. She actually got those letters and spelled out Bridget, marketing manager, word impress and put it on the fridge and tweeted me a picture. It was so cool, like, it was very cool. But six months after that, my husband of 23 years passed away from complications of renal disease. He'd been on dialysis, and um, there's so many complications with dialysis. But early in May, he had gotten a case of pneumonia, which, 
affected his heart, and then three weeks later, basically had a heart attack. And, you know, of course, at this time, I'm posting it on Facebook, and, and everybody's knowing, but my husband was amazing. I mean, he was super, he was literally a genius with a photographic memory, and he did the checking. Um, he did not record our balance in the checkbook because he memorized it in his head. So that was awesome. Uh, I like Quicken, and that's what I use. So, like, I had done accounts payable, accounts receivable. I had no problem. Like, I just, I came home from the hospital being, like, totally task-oriented. I was like, oh, geez, it's going to take me three hours to reconcile the bank account. Thanks a lot, Willard. Um, so, um, yeah, it was really, it was a really hard time. And... Uh, that's like the understatement of the year, but I'm four months on the other side of it, so I have good days and bad days, but this is really when you realize how much you need a community because things are going to happen in your life. People are going to die. You are going to lose your job. You might break down. You, you might need a ride somewhere after a surgery. We're human beings. We're wired to be social. And, and the, the thing with, I'm, getting, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. This is the thing we have to remember. Our jobs are very isolating by their, by their nature. Because if you're doing marketing, if you're doing writing, if you're coding, you need to be alone to concentrate. But we can't live our lives in isolation. You get um, high cortisol levels, it's stressful, it's a terrible way to live. It's very important to be involved in the WordPress community. You know, a lot of people think that the WordPress community is this thing that we talk about. And if you've been to a meetup or you've watched a show on the internet or you've been to a WordCamp, you'll hear this talked about, the WordPress community. like. First, I was like, this sounds like a cult from Portlandia. Um, <laughs> it's a little weird. But um, I realized it's... And then I was like, well, we talk about it in such a philosophical way, like it's the atmosphere that holds in the oxygen. And, you know, we like the atmosphere because it holds in oxygen. And it's great because we're all breathing and we're here, right? But it doesn't feel, like, tangible. It doesn't feel real. Like, we don't ever think, you know, it doesn't... Astronauts, astronauts are aware of, of the atmosphere and oxygen. You know, people who have lung problems are aware of the need for oxygen. But we are, you know, it's different to actually think about the WordPress community in, in the terms of actual human beings, actual people. I mean, to me, the WordPress community is so much more than an atmosphere and they proved it to me. As almost entire strangers, I had posted at 6 o'clock at night. My husband has passed away. And I was going home because it had been a long day of waiting for him to die. I don't know if you've ever taken anybody off life support, but that's really almost, it's very traumatic. Um, and so I was just like done. I was with his family. And uh, it was just time to go home. And I, I just didn't know what I was going to do. I just fell into my normal pattern of, well, tomorrow I'll figure out where we are and uh, see if I have money for cremation. Because I, I don't know. I don't know where we are. I have no idea. Um, so I just was doing my social media thing. This is a problem when it's your job. Like, it's part of my nightly routine. I just check everything, go through this account, look at the notifications. My friend Jen Miller called me and she said, what are you doing on Facebook right now? Get off the internet. You're supposed to be grieving. I'm like, I can't sleep. There's notifications. I have a little OCD. <laughs> um, I, I can't go to sleep with notifications. It's good for my job, bad for my person. I don't know. Just work it one way or the other, right? And, and so this is the amazing thing. I went from a place where, as a secretary, I don't know how many of you have been secretaries,
but it's kind of an invisible position. You don't really get acknowledged as a person. You just do this work, make your boss look great. Your job is to make somebody else's job easier. Um, and so I didn't really expect anybody to do anything for me, that's for sure. Um, but I didn't know. I didn't know this was happening. I definitely didn't ask for it, and I wouldn't have. Um, but about 6 to 12 of my WordPress community came together that night and built willardfund.org with, of course, the Give plugin, because it's the most robust plugin for online donations. A <laughs> uh, little product placement there didn't hurt anybody. And humor will make me not cry, so this is really the thing. So I had no idea what was going on. Just Jen Miller at, called me up, and she was like, why are you on social media? Get off the internet, right? But then she asked me a couple questions. I'm like, why do you want to know where Monsieur went to college? You know, or whatever, like whatever she's asking. And I realized it was because they were building this site. I woke up in the middle of the night, and sometimes when I can't sleep, which is every night, but sometimes when I can't sleep, I watch the Blue Planet because his voice is just like very lulling. And, you know, it's just nature. It's beautiful. It's harmonious. And I must never, ever see the episode on the Coral Seas. But I woke up during the episode of the Coral Seas because Netflix just kept playing it for me this time instead of saying, are you still watching? <laughs> Listen, buddy, I want to go to sleep, you know. Um, so I was really interested by it because I did not know that coral is not just some mineral deposit, which I thought was like a mineral deposit, like stalagites and staminites or whatever, you know. I wasn't a geology person. I taught math. Okay, so anyway, um, so it was really interesting because coral, if you didn't know, is an animal and a plant. And so it has single cell algae in it, so guess what it needs? It needs to photosynthesize. So at night, the, the actual animal builds up a limestone foundation. And it's really interesting because um, it needs to be just a certain level below the sea so that it's not too close to the surface to burn, right? But not too far away that it gets all the, it misses out on the light because photosynthesis requires sunlight. Um, so it's building and building and building at night so that during the day, it can fully open up and be supported for photosynthesis because there's certain things that you have to do. Well, I woke up to PayPal notifications on my phone and the WordPress community had come together and I had $1,300 in the bank when I woke up and enough to pay for cremation and the funeral. And not only that, but hundreds of people have written me notes and sent me cards of love and encouragement. Total strangers I didn't even think would know who I was or care. Um, Jen Miller told me, Jen Miller's Jen Miller calls me every day. Her first husband passed away. She calls me every day, at least once a day, to make sure I'm okay. So she might be named a few more times. Um, Jen Miller said, Bridget, I didn't ask you if we could do this, and we didn't ask you because we knew that you would be wanting to do these things on your own. Well, for the previous 43 years, I've always had to do things on my own. I've always had to rely upon myself. It doesn't matter what I was doing. It was Bridget against the world. And even when I got married, it was Bridget and Mercier against the world. It was just, so I never, I, I felt like I had that American idea of being self-sufficient and independent, and I took it to the extreme. And she said to me, and this really impacted my life, she said, Bridget, you have to let people love you. You have to let them love you. They want to love you, but you have to let them do it. And that's what the WordPress community is teaching me. Because before, like when I would get a friend request on Facebook, I'd be like, hmm, what's your angle? Because <laughs> I know you don't want to be my friend. 
So you must want something, because that's what my life had taught me previously. But I realized the WordPress community is not the atmosphere. The WordPress community is, is Carol Steven, it's Pam Unkst, it's Heather Steele, it's Jason Knill, Devin Walker, it's Matt Cromwell. It's Jen Miller, it's Jason Tucker, it's Various Smith, it's Greg Douglas, it's Adam Silver, it's Alex Vasquez. There's names, because the WordPress community, to me, is those names. Your names are going to be different. There may be overlap in our circles, but those are real, actual, living people. And I interact with them daily and weekly, and it's no exaggeration for me to say that the WordPress community saved me. They saved my career. They saved me in a time of grief and financial trouble. And even now, it's my job to interact with you guys. And I'm such a task-oriented person that I, I know that I can get up in a day and, and I can make it. And Jen Miller would call me and say, did you take a shower today? Um, when you have a creative job and you're going through the grieving process, it's really hard to work. Did you write today? What are you doing? What's going on? Have you talked to your boss? Sometimes I'm like, hmm, she's secretly working for a company and just checking on me. No, she loves me. She just wants to make sure I'm okay. Because Jen Miller is my WordPress community. Jason Tucker is my WordPress community. When he invited me in October to be co-host of WP Blab, which is a show on the Water Cooler Network, I was like, are you sure? But no. Now, those are the people that are texting me, probably in my purse right now, going, why isn't this on Facebook? You said you were going to put it on Facebook. Um, no, that's not happening. <laughs> so now that I have to go to all these events, it's helping me move through time. So what can you learn from Bridget Willard? And how can you like kind of work through, work flow your way through life in a way that's a little bit less backwards than me? Because I started going to my first WordPress meetup after I started working in WordPress, which is exactly backwards. So don't wear that shirt with those pants. Um, <laughs> Really, I do everything backwards. I don't know why. So this is, this is my inspiration to you. We already have, as I said before, a very isolating type of work. Very isolating. Who works alone by themselves? Very isolating type of work. And even if you video chat with people, and even if you go into the office once a week, or have Slack emoji, or Giphy Wars, or Jiffy. Please don't hate me. Um, you, it's not the same. It's not the same as looking at somebody in their face. There's nothing that replaces that. And so I would say to you, don't, don't isolate yourself. It's scary to be, it's so, I am terrified of people. And, I, and, I, and I've had a lot of bad experiences in my life. That's why I'm saying the WordPress community is teaching me how to be loved. So if you feel lonely and you feel like you need a friend, you have to be that friend to have friends. So don't self-isolate. It's very important to be involved in meetups. And a lot of people are like, oh, there's no meetup here. There's no meetup like in walking distance. It takes me an hour or an hour and a half to get to my meetup because I live in Southern California and that's how long it takes to drive 25 miles <laughs> at five o'clock. So on side streets using ways because yeah, um, you, it's really, 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 did I say really? It's really important to be part of the WordPress community. And being part of the WordPress community is participating in the WordPress community with actual human beings and their faces within 18 inches, I'd say, is a good safe space, right? Within arm's distance. Um, you really need to 
make those friends. And I know whether you're like me and you go to a meetup and it's all alphabet soup and you have no idea what they're talking about, you are gonna learn by immersion because that's how we learn languages. And you're going to meet actual people. I think, I think there's a, I'm gonna give you one of my personal working theories, which that's kind of my hobby, personal working theories. So one of my personal working theories is that people think, oh, I already know this. I don't need to go. I already know how to do this. I can do that with my hands tied behind my back. I'm a PHP ninja. Or JavaScript is like my whatever. Um, it's not really about the information. And I think that's where we get it wrong. If you think going to a Word, WordPress meetup is about learning, you're only half right. Of course, it's about learning. We're lifelong learners. Who's a lifelong learner in here? If you're in tech, you better be, because it's going to change in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, Twitter's still here, but if Salesforce buys them, who knows what's going to happen, you know? Um, so you need to be a lifelong learner. It's important to continue to develop your skills, because there's no dream without the what? Work. Oh gosh, come on, don't be lunch coma on me. We're almost done. There's no dream without the... Work. Hello, Cincinnati! You're in the house. So you've got to go to your meetup. I don't care how far away it is. And if there isn't one, there's got to be at least one other WordPress person in your neighborhood. Like, seriously, probably your Uber driver builds websites on the side. Just be like, hey, Uber driver, what do you do in your spare time? Oh, yeah, I build websites. Like, you could have an Uber WordPress meetup. <laughs> seriously, though, uh, WordPress is really emphasizes community. They will help you start a meetup. So go to make.wordpress.org slash community, talk to one of the community people that are here, and they will tell you all about it. Um, if you're overwhelmed, it's still good to go. If you're really amazing, it's still good to go, because going to a meetup is not about the information. Going to a meetup is about the relationships. And we cannot do this work in solitary confinement, which I believe is considered torture by the Geneva Act uh, without being in contact with other human beings. We will go insane, we will go crazy, we will feel lost, we will feel alone, because you will be alone. And it's important to have friends. It's important to show empathy. Sometimes people just like to complain because they need another person to go right. That was your cue to say, right? right? Sometimes people need to complain because they just need another person to say, right? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like a feedback loop. Okay, so the, but the truth is, sometimes you do just need somebody to say, dude, that sucks. I had a client problem like this and da-da-da. And now you can have a conversation over pale ale or coffee or Diet Coke on how you navigated that, what you learned, and how you could do it better. And wait, you're in front end and I'm in back end. Maybe we should partner up to get these better ideas. And maybe we should find a graphic designer and make our agency look bigger and be more agile to get the bigger jobs. Right? right. <laughs> you guys are fast learners. <laughs> okay. This is it. I thought it was going to go short, and here I am. Don't give me a mic. I'm too long. This is, this is really important to me. This is it. This is my close. Ready? I'm going to the center of the room, and I'm going to close this bad boy. This is where I tell you, and if you and I were friends, this is Starbucks. I would sit across from you. I would look into your face. I would lean forward, and I would say, you don't have to do this alone because you're not alone. You are not alone. My name is Bridget Willer, and I believe in the power of the WordPress community. So thank you very much.